Hi guys, Tasha here with Prep For It and my great co-host Mouse Toes from Mouse Toes Channel. If you haven't subbed to either one of our channels, please do that. And if you would, click that like button. That sure helps me out and it'll help us get some more views. Hey Claybank. Hey Ivan KI. Good to see you. Um, if you're out there, say hi. Let us know you're there. So yeah, we're we've had a busy week here. I've been up, oh, up. Oh, sorry. Oh, that I might be my, me. I forget. No, it was me. Okay. I have my cell phone here. I was just, you know, trying to see how many people were waiting and stuff. So I had that. So rookie mistake. Sorry. <laughs> it's sad that the YouTube side won't let us mute before a stream starts. So when I know. you're on it, it's and there's that little lag because I'm DSL and it takes a hot second. Yeah. Same here. Yeah, there's always a lag. So, guys, if, if you see one of us inter interrupting the other, it's not an intentional thing. <laughs> Sometimes it just is the delay between us both. Um, we are excited to announce that we plan on doing this weekly every Wednesday, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. And we're calling it Prepper's Portal. Um, if you're new to prepping, go back and check out when we did our series Preppers Pow Wow and start with what is prepping and work your way through that whole series and that'll help you out. Um, and if you're an experienced prepper, we still love to hear from you. We want to know maybe in those videos things that we missed that we didn't think of because, you know, we can't think of everything, right? That's why we need each other. So uh, we'll give it just a minute for others to come in. Um, sometimes it takes a minute for the YouTubes to get everybody notified and for people to see. So anyway, um, so what have you been up to this week? Work, work, work? Yes, doing my little side hustle job in the gardening. And yeah. Bernie got somebody to help him with some new really good mix topsoil. And he's got all of that done in the garden and then his garden. So we got uh, green beans coming up squash and we finally got rain now when we Yay. get rain it's heavy right yeah so at first it kind of runs off the top but we were able to fill up all our rain barrels and oh, that good. helps so oh, so yeah. far i don't have any blight early blight and you live in a windy area Very. and because we're right on the coast with a sandy soil heirloom doesn't work here my first garden was all heirloom se seeds i had saved over four years and the, the prehistoric disease that's here, if I don't use hybrids, I don't get a, uh, a production of anything. It just gets like overnight, they get eaten to death or disease on them because it's blowing in the wind. You know, it's yeah. like having a GMO farm up the road from you. Yeah. Hey, moms. Hey, Josh. Great to see you both. So good to see you. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same here. Right now, my plants are doing good and my... My pumpkins that I planted, they're yeah, they're starting to bounce back. But the the peppers that I planted look great. I have two rows of peppers, various kinds, mainly bells, uh, various kinds of bell peppers because we don't do a lot of hot. I do have three jalapenos that I planted a few weeks back, and then my strawberries are doing oh. good. I need to do an update on those. They are, they're not producing strawberries yet, but they're adjusting to the new soil. They mm -hmm. survived the cold snap that we had and they're doing well. They're starting to branch off, make more babies, strawberry plants. So they're doing good. So yeah, and I still, and I planted some okra. It's doing okay. It's, it's That's a little bit shocked from transplanting. Um, but yeah, I still have squash. I have so much I still have to plant. But I'm just excited to get started on it and see what thrives in the soil that we have here and what doesn't. You know, that's why it's so important to keep track of what you plant also so that you can see what works best in your area, you know, so you're not just constantly doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result. So I'm excited about that. Insanity, yeah. Yeah. And you know, um, I, you know, I'm 
down here we're the same in our area it's mostly sandy but for mm -hmm. some reason down in that one little spot on our land where i have our garden it's richer soil and when i was planting some of my stuff i mean there was actually earthworms in there and stuff which is yay that's oh. the blessing you know because that's letting me know it's good soil and and uh everything and i may just actually go buy some more earthworms and then just sprinkle yeah. them over it you know just to get it get them going get those castings going in there hvs hey bud i mean, we don't get a, a very much rain at all here so rain catchment i don't know i if i can convince my husband to work on that or not you know i mean it would be helpful even if it was just for watering the garden and stuff but whether mm -hmm. he will or not i don't know but well, okay time consuming yeah yeah it is so there's 10 people out there. If y'all would give us a, a thumbs up, I would really appreciate that. That'll help me out so much with the algorithm, algorithms and all that good stuff. If you're not sub, sub up to both of our channels. Mouse Toes does canning videos, kind of, uh, cooking from her preps videos, um, fishing. She is an incredible fisherwoman. I need to talk to her about learning how to um, set up my pole and all of that because I don't want to be relying on my husband to do that and I want to learn how to tie everything on there properly and stuff I did just get some fishing stuff that I'll show soon but, Excellent. yeah but okay so our topic today is about um, what we see as our biggest threat to like our survival and um, or the biggest threat that we face that maybe we need to prep for. Um, and boy, this one was a hard one for me because I feel like it's twofold. Guys, you can post what you are worried about. Hey, Red Burning Fires, you can post in the in the chat what you see as the greatest threat. And if you're watching this after our live stream is over, put it down in the comments below and we would love to see because next week we're going to go into those different scenarios and ways that maybe we can fill in the gaps on those preps. So for this week, we're just going to kind of discuss what we see happening in the world, what we see as the biggest threat. For me, it was twofold. I really couldn't pick because they're kind of intertwined. Um, one was the financial instability, the way our government just spends our money like crazy keeps raising our taxes, keeps spending our money to the point where we're never going to get caught up and our great grandkids are never going to be able to pay that off. And in turn, you know, printing more money, which causes more inflation, causing supply problems. So it's kind of a, you know, it kind of is a trickling effect so to speak but basically not being able to get the supplies we need not having the supply chain be what it needs to be in order for us to get our stuff so whew, that's a big one right there <laughs> what is your greatest what do you see as the biggest threat right now that that's it that's mine as well because over this last year of the uh big v right the red dragon as we call it we we have learned right now you can't even get chicken with bone and skin right so there's yeah. the big thing of oh there's a shortage no there isn't there's not fewer chickens right mm -hmm. at these big ag farms there simply isn't okay we struggle in our area and places are putting up signs and businesses saying please understand we are extremely short staffed we cannot find people to work so please be patient and kind to the people here who are working because I'm right. in a beach town. So it's small restaurants with a small beach footprint, um, only two phone lines, right? There's no, there's not enough Wi-Fi to support people ordering on an app, right? And right. then sending for delivery. I mean, it's a six mile beach for crying out loud. Right. So they extended the people not working till September, September, right? High season is from May 15th to when school goes back. So that Last really year, devastates your economy. Yes. Oh, wow. Restaurants on the coast in vacation times make one third of their income in the month of June. One third wow. of their 12 month income. Wow. So last year, high season went from May 
or when once they opened the beach after it reopened it, after uh, they let the college spring breakers come, it closed for six weeks. It never stopped till Thanksgiving. Mm. So, and the restaurants here are still struggling to get wings to make chicken wings, uh, fry, to fry chicken in your grocery store delicatessen. So it, to me, it is absolutely the supply. And we had talked about how do you fill in the holes in your prep, preps? Mm -hmm. That's so hard now. It is because, uh, I mean, you know, the availability, just like the canning mm -hmm. lids and stuff. I yes. mean, I've been working a year to find, mm -hmm. find them in our local Walmart and in our local areas and mm -hmm. even online. And yeah. if you did find it online, it was like three to four times higher than yes. it, you know, than it would have been normally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's tough. And, you know, mm -hmm. I've heard on the chickens, um, someone did say because we had that unexpected freeze um, later in the year in the winter and in areas in the south that normally don't get that kind of weather, then that did devastate a lot of the chicken farms. I don't know if that's true or not. But either way, you know really the cause of it doesn't matter it's the fact that it is happening and and you know now truckers are talking about maybe striking again that affects the supply chain they're not wanting to go into areas where you know it's democratic run because they're they're afraid of all of the the threats that that um are out there including all of the rioting and stuff mm -hmm. so yeah i mean it's it just pancakes on itself, you know, it's just crazy. And, you know, I see it being harder. And if last year did not wake people up to how Thank quickly you. things can, can just implode on itself and, and how quickly the supply chain can be affected. Yep. I don't know what will, I really don't. There'd be no hope. And when you talk about filling the holes in your preps, we had 30 things of chicken with bone in six uh, thigh packs in our freezer and with our food saver. Those are gone, right? Yeah, yeah. because so we went through a lot of our preps too during that time. You know, things, I was so grateful we prepped because, yes. and I was already kind of low because Joe had switched jobs a couple of years ago. And so, you know, during that in-between time, you know, mm -hmm. he was went from making four thousand dollars a month to yep. twenty one hundred bring home a month mm -hmm. so it was over half and you know we went through a lot of our preps during that time plus other family that needed mm -hmm. help you know our children and such that, well, think that needed help at that time so like you can, i went through my tomato sauce my tomato juice from tomatoes mm -hmm. we had grown or if we had a bad season i think i bought some from a farmer's market I went through 166 jars, and that includes chicken, beef tips, roast pieces, so yeah. that we didn't have to go to the grocery because there was literally no meat. They had moved to the meat section where chicken and beef would be. They were putting lettuce. There's only so much salad you can eat, okay? And we're on a septic tank, so nobody get crazy with the roughage, okay? Or there we have a whole other issue. And nobody would have come to fix it. You know? Yeah. So yeah, to me, it's all about this last year. That was everybody's sign. And it's unimaginable to me to think that we could have a problem traveling unless we get our, you know, red dragon passport, you know, unless mm -hmm. you get the stick. So it's not the time to relocate. The housing market here is insane. What a little two bedroom raised, two bedroom, two bath duplex last year went for 150 is now 275. Oh yeah. Because people come down from New York, New Jersey, they're buying places. Well, there's going to be a crash, right? In real estate, we know that's coming. Oh yeah. But you cannot fill in the holes in your preps right now. I would have to double my garden space to replace all the green beans we used. And like you, I only do red and green bell peppers, right? right. And some of those I um, put on the grill and then I can them, you know, and I can always add them to a oh, cacciatore yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. Others I freeze, mm -hmm. but I can't replace all that we had. It's not no. possible. You no, know? I mean, you just, it, it's tough. And so if there's, if you see holes in your preps, you need to start hardcore mm -hmm. budgeting for, to get those filled like right now, 
because mm -hmm. I mean, everything that you can, you know, um, it, it's tough because like you said, there's a lot of people, a lot of businesses shut down because of last year's whole debacle. Mm -hmm. And now there's a lot more people out of work. Now they're the housing thing. They're going to be booting people out of their houses pretty yes. soon because the housing moratorium was voted down. So now mm -hmm. they're going to be booted out. Um, so there's just going to be more of a strain on the system. There's going to be, yeah. it's just never ending. It just keeps compiling. So mm -hmm. it's just going to get worse people for a while. And mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't mean it's too late to start prepping, but if you've got breath in you, you can prep just yes. start, but you need to start. You know, I like um, to support mom and pop stores, right? Like my lo local uh, fishing place that sells the hooks I like in the line. Yeah. Um, the, the small hardware store that sells lids. I don't need any more jars, but they haven't had them. So now I had to go to Amazon, but I could get my Orchard Road canning lids from them and get a case of them. You know right. what I mean? And then buy 45 fishing hooks but because I can't afford to support my local places because they don't have it in stock. And yeah. if I can't, I can't eat. Yeah. That's just you know? like a lot of people, you know, um, I, I try not to use Amazon if I don't have to, but, but some right now, as far as preparing, it's like, I heard somebody say, I can't remember whose channel I was watching. I think it was mama bear prepping was talking about this. Like, you've got to get it while you can, yes. you know, if you're disgusted with that business mm -hmm. at the time. Sometimes you just got to get it while you can. Hey, fuzz fork. Oh gosh, fuzz, you turd. <laughs> we did in our mind though, fuzz fork, me and moms. <laughs> <laughs> we love the fuzzy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes. To me, it's frightening and just what you talked about debt and look at the Coke plant that was invested in one invest in 1.6 billion in um, Pennsylvania. They've yeah. shut it down. It was going to provide thousands of union jobs because they know what's coming with the green new deal, even though they were making it more environmentally um, regulated and controlled, they know it's going to be over for them. So they shut that's over. That's almost 3000 jobs. Yeah. Men who work in steel mills, remember, went back to work. Older men had to go teach them how to start it up and train them. There are men who love to work with their hands, whether they're a mechanic in an aircraft or automobile, the Keystone Pipeline, all those things, those jobs are gone. And these men have mad skills like farmers. Yeah. Yeah. They fix their own equipment, you know, their mechanics, everything. So to me, it's just, it's absolutely mind boggling. But this last year changed the whole freaking dynamic, you know, yeah. but just like you said, get it when you can. I mean, don't yeah. go into debt, but. Right. Right. <clears throat> but give up that latte that you were wanting to buy, get, you know, things like that. You know, it's, we're down to crunch time, people. I mean, we really are. And the way the government's spending the money and Alaska Prepper was talking about, you know, the money that was uh, the American dollars that were out overseas is now coming back in, which is flooding the market, which is mm -hmm. increasing inflation. And then with our government printing money and stuff like that, I mean, prices of goods are increasing constantly. Like you mm -hmm. mentioned last week, talking about the price of wood. I mean, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, we. if you look at that, if you look, what he said is if you look at the price of gold and silver, when that's going up, that's because the American dollar value is going down. Because gold and silver has its own set basic value. So if, if the value is increasing, it's because our American dollar is decreasing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we just have None to of it be worth, worth a penny if they ever unpeg the U S dollar from the Petro, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what the ultimate goal is. But I tell you what, I can eat fish and crab. I have to have hooks and, you know, 25 to 45 pound test line. Yeah. And 
I get more things off of Amazon so I can get it in bulk. I was so disgusted at the seed prices that at the end of last season, before the poop really hit the fan, I ordered three years worth of seeds from Burpee and another one online, right? Yeah. Where you get 20 seeds for $3.29. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting caught without my Roma and canning paste tomatoes and yeah. string green beans and cantaloupe because hybrids don't, I mean, if you're not a hybrid, it doesn't work for me. I can't plant right. heirloom and have a production to save a seed. Right. You know, I'm just right. feeding the disease and the prehistoric insects here. Yeah. But, you know. Well, that's just it. I bought pretty much every seed that was on the display um, at Tractor Supply that was burpee. Um, I mean, that's all they had at the time because I got it early, early spring. Now, I don't know what, what's going to grow here and what isn't in the soil. I don't know what's going to do well or not. So I bought a large variety this year. I'm planting a large variety, maybe not as much as I normally would have as yes. far as of each kind. But this is like a trial year where, hey, BC, BC truck, BC blades. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I'm, this is a trial. This is a trial year. And I know that every year that garden soil is going to get better and better because I'm going to just keep adding and amending and, and tra trading out what I grow in there. But this is a trial year to see what's doing well and what will do well down there. Whether mm -hmm. it is heirloom, hybrid, you know, whatever. Yes. If it's heirloom, heck yeah, that's awesome. Then I can mm -hmm. just save the seeds and replant the, each year, you know. But if not, I have a variety of those different ones and, and I can try them all and see which works best and go from there. But I do know the one, two of the thing, or one of the big things that we eat probably three to four times a week is green beans. We love green beans. Um, I love it with skip spaghetti with other pastas. I love, I love it with pretty much anything, you know? And so that's one of the things tomatoes is another um, so the things that we use all the time is going to be my main focus. And the other things are kind of experiments right now. Yes. So. And let's say that something doesn't grow well for you, but you have a friend in another county or somebody like Jerry, right? Where you go, hey, this doesn't grow good here. Let me mail these to you. You send me something different, right? That yeah. might. And then you can actually do a real barter. But you're smart right. to try small amounts of different things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I learned a big lesson this year because I learned that not to start my seedlings quite so early because then they got too big for my little seed starting things. And then I didn't have anywhere. I couldn't get them in the ground yet. So, right. you know, just learning to learning those things as you're starting a new skill, you know, I haven't mm -hmm. gardened in, in 20 some years, almost 30 years, and it was up in Kansas, and the soil was almost black. It was so rich, you know, and I could just grow anything in that without working at it. You know? mm -hmm. It was amazing, but down here, it's completely different, so it's just learning this soil, this ground, this environment, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, it's just a completely different ball game. There, I was blocked from the wind. Yes. Here, not so much, and it, it's like, you know, just like a convection oven over my, <laughs> with the heat mm -hmm. that we get here. So just learning to, to weigh all that. But this is the time to do it, folks. This is, you, you don't want to wait until the poo hits the fan before you start learning these skills and practicing the skills. You can learn them all you want, but until you actually put them into practice, sometimes things aren't as easy as they look, <laughs> Right. Yes. So, and I um, already made a good point. Get fertilizer. Kevin's got a bunch of, I think it's 17, 17, 17, right? And then put it in the big buckets with the gamma lids because we're going to need that, right? And good yeah. Lord, you know, people use fertilizer for bad things. I can imagine where we have to have a special card to buy fertilizer. So it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That is very smart. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So what is our audience here on the side? What do, what do you all in the chat like um, see as the greatest threat that we face? Another thing that I see is um, 
the perceived weakness, which which is true, of our current administration and how all of the different players in the world are yielding their wielding their their selves up, propping themselves up and puffing their chests out and making a bunch of threats and a bunch of moves that they probably wouldn't have made and did not make during the last administration. So did, yep. was Vern, did Vern make an appearance? No, yep, she could hear him. Mom's oh. has like supersonic Vern hearing. Yeah. Oh gosh, I don't. <laughs> I wish I did, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, they have a connection that we cannot explain, Oily. They have a very big connection. Oh, uh, well, tell Vern hi for me, please. Yeah. If Vern left me for any woman, it would be mom's. <laughs> loud. I think she was for me. <laughs> <laughs> it oh is cool. My and then other countries are petrified because of the position we're in and looking so weak. And that's yeah. scary too, you know, oh, but at least yeah. look what has happened to us. It used to be afraid of all those things, EMT. Now I'm just worried about getting some darn chicken, being able to grow some darn food. And, you know, I got to get gasoline no matter what that costs. And remember right from the jump, it went up 30 cents a gallon. I think oh, now yeah. we've gone up 62. It's crazy. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's insane. But mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, now, do you have allergies, Oily? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just got myself a four-year supply of that Allertex stuff you get from Kirkland, which I think they sell oh. it at Costco, but I got it off oh. Amazon because we are so, we're so we at a 10 on the 1 through 10 scale, and it's that hard, oh. dry cough where you can just feel it laying down in your bronchial tubes on all the oh, hairs, yeah. and if you take a deep breath, it tickles, and you make a dry cough, and it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I have to stock up on my allergy meds, and then I also have to stock up on an expectorant because yes. I get a lot of drainage from my allergies. I'm allergic mm -hmm. to everything out here. I'm allergic to the cows. I'm allergic oh. to almost every tree on our property. I'm allergic to all the different grasses and a ton of the weeds and feathers from birds, and I'm just <laughs> allergic to so much. It's like there's just no getting away from it, so I just... I have to pretty much do something, it either do essential oils, which I do lavender, peppermint, and I can't think of the other one right now. And um, those three on the bottom of my feet, or I do an allergy medication. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And you're smart to get the one with expectorant. Vern just resupplied our cough syrups because, you know, they go bad over time. Because with when you get that post nasal drip, it either goes in your stomach and out your body, or it goes into your lungs, and you have no control over where it goes. And then the next thing you know, you got bronchitis. And the last place I want to go is the hospital or a doctor's care unit. You know? Oh yeah, and and you know when you're talking about that, I mean you you can either end up uh, you can also end up with it's going to come out that that drainage is going to come out one way or another, whether it comes out throwing up or diarrhea, you know, because mm -hmm. it just messes mm -hmm. with your stomach. Hey, Caitlin, yep. good to see you, girl. Welcome. Um, yeah, so those are my two biggest um, thoughts that are kind of meshed together like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they just are connected. So, yeah, yep. BC, I agree completely. I agree that I think this has been perceived as the weakest president yet, and that is dangerous. That is a dangerous thing for world leaders that are normally volatile to perceive our president as. I mean, mm -hmm. very. Um, so, yeah, they're all trying to make their moves, moving their little chess pieces right now. Well, and we're in a southern state, and we're they're not fond of us. And I liked how you brought up truckers, too. We learned in the big beginning of the V thing, the Red Dragon, that right. without truckers, there wasn't going to be anything in stores. And people revered them, right? And they were so thankful for them. Places like New York wouldn't give them a place to park overnight, right? Right. But, and I admired them greatly for going, we're not going in there, right? You got riots in the streets. But at yep. what point they're locked down on us so hard, not through the trucker's choice, right? But through right. the woke corporations that, yep. you know, do their business that they work for, that uh, they can't do it. 
And yep. it's just sad. We have to be more self-sufficient. I'm thankful you live in a remote self-sufficient area, oh, right? Praise I God. Thank God. Yeah. We've been here eight years. We call it our hole. I may not want to eat mullet every day, but I could, right? And at least it's, it's a, what do you call it? A port in the storm. Yeah. It's just yeah. shocking. Yeah. Yep. I agree. HVS, I think so too. I think definitely this administration isn't going to be behind Israel. There's no, no way. They mm -hmm. won't. I mean, they've all made it clear their feelings towards Israel and that breaks my heart because I mm -hmm. know what the Bible says about that. <laughs> If if you're a yep. nation that's against them, that it's not good for you. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people think that the U.S. of A. is just undefe undefeatable and it it's going to stand yep. forever. But so did the Romans. You know, you cannot. Yes. Hey, the ugly prepper, welcome. Good to see you. Um, we cannot assume that the USA is going to always be the USA. It's already transforming before our eyes, and you know, the name still remains the same, but that doesn't mean it stands for the same thing it once did. I, there are plenty of us that still do stand for that, but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's going to continue on that direction. Well, and our military is being weakened from within. Remember, they did the big Navy layoffs years ago, get rid of all the experienced. Now they're not pushed as hard, but I tell you what, any country that underestimates the fierce determination of the American soldier will freaking yeah. regret it because there are enough who love this country, but now asking about, do their loyalties lie here? Uh, yeah, they do. Cause they sure ain't doing it for the money. Nobody takes care of their family anymore when they're gone. You know, they've had to make all their own things to do that. And it only frightens me that, they would do it with the minimum of resources and their yeah. sheer determination, you know? Yeah. And then I just think, you know, I have um, one grandson left in the Navy and I'm like, bro, just stop it. Yeah. You know, and then one yeah. just went in the army. I was like, what are you Yeah. Doing? I mean, at this point in time, You're it's like, what are they fighting for? I mean, that, it, it would be different if it was back in like world war two time. Like you yes. would hate to see them go, hey, hi, Desert Pioneer. Welcome. So good to see you. Yeah, it would be different if it was back in like World War Two time where it was it was about the uh, it was really about protecting America. But the the way things are going now with with our with the people that are in power, it's not like that. They're they're wanting to they're wanting something completely different than what we were founded on and that is a frightening place to be and when there, there's more and more people and they're talking about trying to stack the supreme court again and trying to yes. do all these things it's just you know a lot of people say oh it'll never get done that's against the law they can't do that well they've also limited people's freedom sticks and freedom seeds right and yes. stuff like that and it says that shall not be infringed mm -hmm. so I'm sorry, you know, you can't rely on what the, you know, the law, that the law is going to protect you anymore. I'm not saying all are bad that are in there. I'm just saying more and more are falling to the way of the more liberal side. And I have friends that are liberals. I love them. I'm not trying to down them. I just think that there's been such a brainwashing in the Mm -hmm. in the whole, you know, in the colleges and things like that. And they put their pride in their learning and in their education and, and in themselves instead of really studying history and what that means for us. If we, I mean, they're trying to push us in ways of, of, of other countries where it's more socialist and those mm -hmm. never work. Over time, they do not work. They will fall. And it, we're seeing that now with all of the spending and the mm -hmm. inflation and the printing of money. And I just don't see that last uh, lasting. I yes. mean, something's got to give at some point. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the current administration, hey, Uncle Al, Dipole, Frog 79, when the current administration is pushing to 48 to 52 percent of our wage, our taxes, they're wanting to tax us 42 to 50 or 48 to 52 percent on our taxes. Who can afford that? 
Well, and don't think they won't come for your IRA and your 401k either. The oh, yeah, because they've already went for Social Security. Exactly. So. Well, they went, um, somebody, the um, the partner of the current president, that's what he said. How much money is enough? I mean, people don't need more than $250,000. Seriously. Not, but not by the was, way the prices are going up for because of them right. pushing prices up. Well, oh. 250000 won't do anything for you because you have to have that in the stock market and you have to draw out of it through dividends. How long is that going to last you? Well, let's for ask them if they can handle uh, living on that for a lot oh. the rest of their lives. They're exempt. And remember, Congress is yeah, supposed exactly. to apply by the same laws of people. They didn't have to take Obamacare. We lost our health insurance yep. through um, Vern's company that he worked for. As retirees, when Obamacare came, they cut us all loose. I think it was going to be 363 bucks a month. And instead, we don't have any. And you're like, wow. So it's it's all very frightening. Yeah, and it's all sure. very it's all very biblical. But here's yeah. the bottom line, you know, man cannot govern himself. Right. The Supreme Court's gonna be here in an NRA case, the National Rifle Association, and they could hose us all. Yeah. So we know they've been corrupt forever, right? And it's just we have no control over it, even though there's more places that want a convention of states. It's your Congress who leads that. They're never going to let it happen. And yeah. they all sold us out, but they, they're they supposed to abide by the same laws we do. Yeah. So it's slowly been eroding. It's our rights that are gone. And yeah. people will go, it's in the Constitution. No, that's the Bill of Rights or something. So the, the ignorance of even people my age, I'm like, you don't even know where that is. You're yeah. just talking smack. You're not talking smack. We cannot fix any of that, but we can fix ourselves. And anybody who did not have um, arms and projectiles, good luck getting them. For the fourth year in a row, we've broken the record. For our area, it's Southern Law Enforcement Division. When you go to get a gun and they run your background check immediately, mm. we've broken records four years in a row across the country. But people can't find ammo. If you ain't got the projectile, what do you have? A club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Club. Volcano, you know what I tell people like that when they say stuff like that? I tell them he, the Bible also says that you are to take care of your own family first. Mm -hmm. And they're making it more and more difficult for us to take care of our own families first. And Jesus was not a socialist. No. Okay. At all. And it, socialism is another word for a progressive, a Marxist. It's communism. And it doesn't work like you said earlier. It hasn't worked anywhere. Right. It's mm -hmm. never going to work anywhere. It's just redistribution of wealth taken from those who are the worker bees. But right now we don't have people who want to go to work. I love the memes coming out of boyfriends or husbands talking to their wives. Honey, it's been over a year. You know, you need to go back to work. Right. But it's yeah. so hard to give up that free money. Mm -hmm. it's oh yeah, definitely. There is such pride in picking up a paycheck. Now, most of the time they ought to be able to be embarrassed to pay you so little, but we give the same work ethic where you pay, whether you pay us $10 an hour or a hundred, we're still going to work hard. Right. BC, thank you all for coming or thank you for coming by. I love you. Good night. It's good to see you. Um, yes, Uncle Al, we're talking about um, just like the most immediate threat that we see right now. What do you see right now as the greatest threat to our survival to, you know, mm -hmm. what is the greatest threat to us? How are you so. protecting yourself and your family from whatever that is, whether it's food shortage um, unrest, if you live in a congested city area, those type things. Yeah. 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 And in a lot of those scenarios, it's tough because uh, there really wasn't anywhere safe necessarily for people go like last year. There, it wasn't like they could go from one part of the country to another, like, like say a hurricane was hitting your area and yes. you could move out of that area. It was a worldwide, I mean, it, you couldn't even go out of country because it was a worldwide thing. People yep. were closing down their borders. So 
you have to figure out how you can make it in those situations. And what if the supplies did not start coming back, you know, on the yes. shelves? Like, what if they stayed bare like that for a long time? And, mm -hmm. you know, like people relying on hunting and things like that. And um, I've talked with several people about this recently, too, you know. That only lasts so long. That only yep. lasts so long. So um, once the animals are dead, they're dead. And especially if you're not being a good steward of them and making sure there's enough to restock or replenish the supply, mm -hmm. that's good. Then that's gone for good. Then what? You know, <laughs> it's in it. You, they better have their own land to do it on. It's it's insane. You know, people go I'll take to the woods. My biggest concern with hurricanes is say we've got a cat four coming and we're going to go like to the Greenville area or something of South Carolina. They're going to let yeah. us go freedom of travel. And even to stay in a hotel, cause I ain't staying in a shelter. I have a dollar. I'll get myself. I don't care if it's a motel six, right? Yeah. With bedrooms. I happen to like motel sixes. I don't know why people hate them. They talk smack. Um, I've stayed them in an Iowa, different places over our life, you know, cause you didn't have all these chains like you do now. Yeah. And well, we have to show a COVID vaccine card because I ain't getting a shot. I don't need the shot. No, I'm, I'm not. You know? I'm not getting that. Yeah. Plus, it might last six months, and you have to get every. Notice nobody drop, dies of flu A or B anymore. Nobody's yeah. asking to get a flu shot anywhere. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, that's the scary thing. Is will they let you leave? And I mean, let you. Yeah, you know, people go, ain't nobody gonna stop me. We got two lane roads here. You know how easy it is to shut down the interstate? Real easy, you know, if you're a state trooper or somebody. So those things are scary. But I just want enough to eat, enough to grow, and to be left alone. I didn't get this yeah. old go out like a punk, you know. The real the real scary part for me is, you know, absolutely I'm gonna grow my own food. You know, I'm I'm not saying that, but a lot of people think once you do that, you're all set because you're you're being self-reliant. But if you look back in history, back at in World War Two, World mm -hmm. War One, they actually seized people's animals. They seized seized yes. their crops. They seized mm -hmm. all that stuff and, and made it very difficult for them to continue to live. You know, it that's frightening to me. You know yes. that because if they take all that. And then they demand any crops that you produce mm -hmm. from then on out or any animals. I mean, what do you do then, you know? And that's where, you know, stashes and things come in. But, man, I just barely get to where I can get things caught up here mm -hmm. to make sure we're sustained, let alone having another area to have to keep watch on and, and mm -hmm. protect, you know? Well, and so that's, that's the thing, like, our national defense authorization act right let them come in then come take your solar panels your backup batteries oh, yeah. and just like half there's a great series and i think it's on youtube but it's a british series you know they talk funny and that sort of thing and it's this historians who go around and they reenact what happened so they had a farm and they needed to harvest a pig so they make a civil servant in the town who has to spy on you Right. And then you have to notify them when you're going to slaughter the pig because the country's getting three quarters of your pig. Yeah. So let's say the civil defense guy comes and you say, oh, the pig got sick and died. You better have its body. So when they didn't like people, they would come kick you off the farm and your neighbors came and did it who would comply. Yeah. And that can happen. And that is beyond frightening. Yeah, you know, it really is. Government authorization. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, man, it gives me a little bit of anxiety to think about, but I know that, you know, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to be proactive to try to help that situation mm -hmm. to the best I can, you know, and that's yeah. all I can do. And the rest I have to give to God and know that he's going to protect me mm -hmm. as best as possible. And I know if not, then I know where I'm going. I know where my eternity lies, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that gives me comfort in knowing that, but whew, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. it, it's this is what I tell Jesus. Anytime you want to come back with the new system of things, I'm down because this yeah. is wild. This is wild. 
And, it, and it's just what uh, you I, said. We never expected this country not to be a refuge of freedom. Right. Right. And now the people, the very people that are in power absolutely seem to hate this country and everything it stands for. And their goal mm -hmm. is to completely annihilate this country, bring it to its knees so that mm -hmm. it's equal with the other part of the world. Well, that's mm -hmm. why we stood at that. That's why we were this city on a hill, you know, is because of what we stood for when when it all began here. So mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not saying that the, that the founders didn't have their flaws and, you know, Mm -hmm. coming in and taking just taking land and things like that i'm not saying that you know my heart goes out to the people back then that have already lived on the land and, and the land was taken yes. from them but we certainly don't want to do it again you know that no. and that's what they're basically trying to do they're trying to grab the land they're trying to shame farmers from having cows because mm -hmm. they drink too much water have you seen the new oat milk ad mm -hmm. the new and they fart too the oat milk ad is they use, uh, use basically use oat milk because growing oats takes less water than than drinking cow's milk because cows drink more water than oats use. The California so destroyed their farmers saving the Delta smelt. It's crazy. Diverting the water back to the ocean. I just cannot with these people. The man bun people, they're not ever going to farm. They're not going to kill a rabbit, you know. These, these little masters in medieval arts or English literature, they're not going to survive. That's the truth. They don't have a workforce, you know? Mm. It's just sad. It's just, it's mind-numbing is that people don't understand where food comes through from a grocery. Remember, it used to be the grocery store has three days. We found mm -hmm. out Walmart, Publix, Kroger's didn't have 18 hours of food in the big rush for toilet paper. Oh yeah. Sa hand sanitizer. People didn't even know how to make their own hand sanitizer and they're fist fighting over it. Well, but you all know, the that's, were left, orange juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's another aspect of it. People not using their brains anymore because you know, what did they do? Just like the moms that were all freaking out because there wasn't wet wipes anymore. Yes. What mm -hmm. did they do before wet wipes were invented, people? They used washcloths. I mean, yes. it's it's just. Mm -hmm. woo. <laughs> We've it's become amazing. literally fat and lazy. Yeah. 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 We want everything pre-made for us, ready for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just don't use our brains anymore. It's just mm -hmm. absolutely nuts. It really is. Common sense is out the window in a lot of ways. Redneck. I'm a redneck cocker ham. How are you? I love you. I missed you. At the women who were upset they couldn't get their hair colored anymore when salons were closed. Oh, I, that was the least of my worries. Girl, I got yes. so many gray. It's okay. Yep. It's all good. Yep. See, even <laughs> ugly prep those cloth diapers, but they would have to have a machine. They would have to be able to make them and understand you got to have that little rubber. Remember the rubber pants? Mm -hmm. they, yeah, and keep yeah. Vaseline on them so they can get a rash. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 very interesting. It's, yeah. it's flabbergasting how lazy we've and gotten. That, and when we are prepping, we need to look at those things. Mm -hmm. We need, you know, you really do need to look at that. Like, okay, I'm probably going to need two or three times the amount of washcloths, or you know, if I'm going to have to use this in lieu of that. I'm going to need more or, you know, I need to have that stock so that I can use that if I need to. Things like that. If, if the mm -hmm. man-made, you know, the ready-made stuff isn't available, you have you have to be thinking along those lines, too. Mm -hmm. um, which we'll cover more on filling the gaps next week. But um, it's just a, a good oh, go point. Ahead. Maybe people couldn't find bread and then they In couldn't the get yeast to try and learn how to make it. Mm -hmm. In this interim, no one has learned how to make a loaf of bread or even with a bread maker, they're hopeless. Because, you know, tuna salad's great, but when you don't have fresh lettuce, right, or be able to put it in a sandwich, mm -hmm. it's how many you have, have learned a new skill so that it doesn't happen again. Because I'm not going to run out of yeast. I didn't need to buy it during the uh, issue. You know, right. 
Right. But it did but prompt me it. to to buy it when I saw it so that I could keep yes. stocked up. And um I mean we're we're blessed that the electric stayed on during all that time. So and we were able to have our ovens going. We were yes. able to bread bread machines if you don't do it handmade. But yeah, mm -hmm. learning those skills ahead of time so that we can we can already know it and it's not like a panic and we're wasting supplies at mm -hmm. that time that we can no longer get. You know what I mean? If if we're learning those skills now while supplies are available, like flour and yeast and things like that, then it's going to be a lot mm -hmm. easier than having to use your actual preps in, an, yes. in a really serious situation, you know, and like you do cooking with your preps. Uh, yes. It's important to start learning how to do that now so that you're not throwing a bunch of stuff away in a shift situation. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to be in Tiatwaki and be throwing away food, you know, messing mm -hmm. it up. So, yeah, all of those things come into play. And so that's what we're going to discuss next week is looking at various parts of these scenarios and ways to fill in those gaps. Just like we talk about washcloths with the, instead of a baby diaper or baby wipes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And mom's made a good point. How many people have been saving their bacon grease? Yeah. Some people are going, I can't get peanut oil or saffron oil. I'm like, you ain't got no bacon grease and you're Southern. I mean, my shirt says straight up Southern, right? <laughs> and it's like, seriously, you ain't got to refrigerate it. So if people hadn't been saving that in the meantime, they're dumb. I like what you said about when you come across yeast, you buy it. There's yeah. a lady who's a little older than me here who wanted to make banana bread or for beer bread. I forget what the hell she was going to make. Anyway, she wasn't beer bread. She had to have yeast. So I said, I can give you how many teaspoons do you need? And she needed three. I said, I'll give them to you. And then I saw her like three months ago and I said, did you get some of that instant yeast I told you about? Oh, no, I'm not paying those prices. I said, so you still have no yeast? No, I was going to call you and see if I could get some more. I said, no, because it's something you know you don't have. It's something you like to make and you need to order the and, instant yeast off of Amazon if you can't you, find You're the one that's going to have to replace it since she doesn't want to go purchase it. So, what, I mean, you can't be yes. her supply, Jane. <laughs> that's, that's exactly my point. You know, people go, oh, share with people. That is a needy Nelly. Well, I don't really make bread enough. So you pour it into a jar and keep it in your refrigerator. It will not go bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. <laughs> Sometimes some people, I, I don't know. I, I could not have the gall to continue to go knowing that I didn't want to pay the prices in store, but I'm going to expect you to replenish your supply, yes. you know, in with the inflated prices, you know. Oh my goodness. Woo. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Volcano just said, I hope I don't have to break into my number 10 cans of free dried foods anytime soon. And I this the same with me. We talked last week. I love Thrive products, but they have gone up ridiculous in price. Ridiculous. So I have a lot of empty cans of it I use through that year, but right. I'm, I'm not replacing it because it, there is no reason that their costs went up like that. And it's oh, like, yeah. wow. You know, I like them for convenience, the bechamel sauce, but I have, you know, a lot of different things. I love the um, freeze dried mushrooms, but I don't like the dehydrated ones. So I don't do yeah. them in my dehydrator. And so I was really surprised at the cost. I have the butter powder, which is fabulous, but it's in a smaller can. But right. once you open it, it ain't good for 25 years. If you buy buttermilk powder at your grocery and you open it two months, it's turned yellow and discolored. So it sounds yeah. good. But it, once you open it, it ain't there 25 years. But I can't pay yeah. those prices. But volcano, yeah. you know, we can cook over an open fire with those number 10 cans. So don't throw them away if you have to bust into them. Dehydrating uh, or um, dehydrating um, your food is a great way to go. And I know you do a lot of that. And mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more cost effective than the freeze dried. Although I do have a lot of freeze dried food. Yeah. Um, I do, you know, just so I have it for longer term and I can kind of forget about it for a while. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, my, my deal is I'm going to have my two dehydrators going this summer on things that I can dehydrate and yes. get, get that 
put back, you know, vacuum sealed or whatever to have for later on. That's so. how we're looking at what we have left over in cans unopened. Just what you said, that's our true emergency food supply. Yeah. You know, so if we get another lockdown, I'm not going to open that until there's nothing else on my shelves. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But at least you have, and freeze dried is fantastic. I mean, when you rehydrate that, it's like it's just fresh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I mean, there's some stuff that's got a weird texture after it is rehydrated, but most of it is excellent. And at least you can do some kind of a stew or a casserole or something like that and make it make it very good, you know. So do you remember depression soup talk where it was you always had a pot of water on the stove? It was generally wood. Okay. And if she had a little leftover celery, it went in there, you know, maybe the leaves, anything, mm -hmm. and that and it just cooked on the stove all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you came home and you were lucky and there was a little loaf of bread that she mm -hmm. had made, she made might have just been beer bread. That was mm -hmm. soup and that bread's really filling. But yeah. yeah people couldn't even well, buy, you know, kids are home. They want sandwiches. You know, I mean, really, we all need to learn how, we don't necessarily have to have yeast to make bread. We could make something like an unleavened bread or tortillas. We need to learn yes. how to do that stuff. Biscuits, like look, that was mentioned. <laughs> So, I mean, there's other options and a good thing to have is some of the older cookbooks where they give you the recipes for making your own baking powder yes. and, um, and your basic, um, you know, your like your biscuit mix or whatever, like your taco seasoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I have a couple of different ones here with great recipes. I've tried them out. I know I like them. If I didn't like them, I adjusted them so that we would like them so that, yes. you know, and making mm -hmm. sure you have those supplies on hands to do that. Bannock doesn't require yeast either. Yeah, that's true, Kaylin. Mm -hmm. I was surprised the people who couldn't make a, a basic tortilla. I was like, you're not going to want a peanut butter and jelly on it, but if you're trying to make them a ham and cheese sandwich, because people had their kids home, you know, and they want a sandwich or uh, crackers, also a dehydrator is wonderful. If your crackers start going stale, stick them in your dehydrator. Oh, Fresh there you go. Moist. They got moist. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. they, do they taste? They taste. The taste is good once you do that. Yes. I haven't ever mm -hmm. tried that. Yep. Yeah, Doesn't lose the salt. I've done it with club crackers and Ritz. That's kind of the only crackers we eat because they're affordable. You know, I used to love them little triangle things, but God, their price went up way before the big V thing. You know. Yeah. Looking around your area, hey, I'm on it. Good to see you. Yes, that is true. Learning to try to catch or make your own yeast. Mm -hmm. Woo, that that's a skill. I, you know, that can be a little difficult, but yeah, it'd be worth trying. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Sun are a good tater replacement for starch. Yeah, you know, like in our area. Um, I think it was two weeks ago. We have, because we're sort of like a desert here in a sense, um, mm -hmm. we have a lot of yucca plants. And yes. yucca has so many uses. I mean, you can use the leaves for cordage. But if you just grab towards the center part of the plant, grabbing one of the leaves and pull it, there's a thin white strip down there at the bottom. And it's mm -hmm. really tender and it's so good. But you have to learn what ones you can tolerate and can't tolerate that are in your area because I am also mildly allergic to latex and there are plants like yucca that have a latex type of, re you can have a latex type of reaction to. It's basically like a latex, just like the um, wild, uh, what is it? Is it wild celery? I'm trying to think of what it is that, that people, wild lettuce, you know, it's, it's got like an opium type property to it, but it's also oh, kind of, it also has like a latex type uh, property to it. So learning, you know, what, what mm -hmm. you need to learn the precautions to take with them. But yeah, that plant is so useful and it was very tasty. But whenever I first tried it, I just did a very little bit just to try it and make sure I didn't have any issues testing yeah. it on your skin, something like that. Um, but yeah, that was really good. It's not much of the leaf, but then you can use the leaf to make cordage and things like that if you need mm -hmm. to. Uh, the leaf lathers up sun if you, some if you pound it with a rock and then... Um, put it in water, it kind of lathers up just a little bit. It's 
used as a soap. The root, after it's cooked, it can be used as a soap. It can also be edible. It has saponamines in it, just like soap does. So mm -hmm. learning the plants in your area and different ways to use them is really important. And that's one of the things I'm working on right now is learning about the plants in my area and how I can use them. Um, the so. best things to dehydrate, in my opinion, is making scalloped potatoes. I got myself just a little hand mandolin, slice uh -huh. them thin. Of course, you got to set them in some lemon water while you're slicing them. Then you got to blanch right. them three minutes. To keep them and from browning. We, make anything. we put it at the bottom when we make redfish envelopes. You can put it on the bottom right, add a little milk or evaporated milk, sprinkle some of your peas over it, some carrots, any other things. And you can make a really nice casserole with that, a meatless casserole. And yeah. potatoes are like bread. They're yeah. very filling, you know? Yeah. And you do things like dehydrating your cooked hamburger meat and stuff mm -hmm. too, don't you? Yeah. Like, and I have never done that. And I really need to do that and try it. And, and what do you use? Um, that in anything like, if you make tacos now I can my hamburger but you have to cook it completely in a skillet and mm -hmm. people don't like the texture the texture is not different to me so I brown it completely drain off the grease and then I run hot water over it in a colander get all the grease off can it just like meat 90 minutes I do pints and it's a, a, the pint holds a little over a pound of chicken or beef, whatever. And then I can have instant beef stroganoff, right? I don't have to brown the ground beef, fresh ground beef, drain it. I always have pasta. I always get those 10 for $10 sales, put them right. in my long bags. You can make instant tacos. Hey, I feel like making some nachos, right? Yeah. Sprinkle that over your nachos, your cheese. And the texture doesn't bother me, but I'm not making a hamburger out of it. Right. I mean, you're not going to make a hamburger out of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, we're at the hour mark. I thank each of you so much for coming by. If you haven't hit that like button, if you would do that before you leave, that would really help me out. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love your subscription. Please check out Mass Toast channel as well and get her subbed up. And we plan on doing it for those that came in late. We plan on doing this prepper Preppers Portal live chat every Wednesday night, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. And we would love to see you here. And next week, we're talking about filling in the gaps on our prep which is kind of a continuation of the, the conversation that we started tonight. So I love you. I thank each of you for coming. Many blessings to you all. And guys, please remember to prep for it. Prep for it all. Bye, guys.